Hello, my name is Matthew Randall and welcome to the second part in the 3D tracking tutorial. Now, before I start doing my 3D track, what we've done is we've, we've distorted our lens. But before we start, but, but before, or we've undistorted the lens uh, for our track, but before we go on to the tracking it, we've got a problem. And the problem is, if I play this through, you can see that we've got a chap moving here. There's some little bit of movement here, okay? And then right at the beginning of the frame, if I just right at the beginning of the clip, there's a person here moving. Now, anything that's not static in our shot is going to get tracked and it's going to interfere with understanding the position of the camera or the, or the actual track of the camera, okay? Um, so we need to, what we need to do is actually eliminate these. We need to basically roto out these areas and tell our tracking software not to track these areas, okay? Now, that's very simple to do. All we need to do is simply add a roto node, okay, to our scene, okay, uh, and literally what I can do, I'll I'll I'll, I'll demonstrate it with um, these people here, okay. So what I want to do is I can just simply I'm going to go to frame one, okay. You need to have a reference frame where you're starting uh, when you, when you're doing all these sort of things. So I'm just going to go to frame one, okay, and you'll see why we need this reference frame in a moment. Uh, Sorry, let's just, there's different types of rotos you can do, but all I want is the standard Bezier uh, curve, which is that icon there, okay? I'm just going to draw a very rough sort of outline around these two people here, okay, great. Um, and then what I'm going to do is then just insert a shuffle node, or a shuffle copy node, here we go, all right. And basically just copy this alpha in. And what you'll see then is when we go into our alpha channel, this is this is there's an alpha channel that's matting uh um, this area uh, out. We don't we don't want this area, okay? So this is telling us the bit not to track, as it were. Okay. Um now what we want to do is I'm just gonna go back to RGB, okay? Now we've got another problem. Because it's a moving camera, what's happening is if I move this forward in the scene, uh, they're basically moving out of this track area. They're moving out of the rotoed area. That's going to cause us a problem. Okay, so what I want to do is uh, I actually need to. I'm not performing a 3D track, but what I want to do is do a 2D track of this scene in order to make sure that the roto follows these two uh, people here. Okay, so I'm going to add a track node in. Okay, um, so uh, yeah, I'm just going to track that in. Okay, I'm just going to use a standard tracker. Okay, so this is just a, a 2D tracking node that we're using here. Okay, I'm going to attach that to our undistorted image. So it's going to it's going to track based on the undistorted version of our scene. Okay, and if I click on here, what we can do is if I go into tracker, what I want to do is add a track. Okay, so what we want to do is add a point that we want to track in our 2D in our in our video. So all we're doing is this simply a 2D tracker. We just identify a feature for it to track, and then it will just follow that feature in our scene for us. So if I click Add Track, here we are. Uh, this is our marker to to actually uh, follow a scene. And incidentally, if you want to look at this in more detail, you can actually you know add multiple tracks. You can actually track the rotation and scale of a scene as well. Um, but for our purposes, we're just going to track one point, okay? So what I'm going to do is just simply, uh, sorry, I've made this a little bit bigger. I'm just going to just drag this and track the corner of our screen here. You can see a, a close-up of what we're doing in this area here. So what we want to do is pick out a feature to track. And what we're looking for is a high contrast feature. And what we're looking for is a corner. If we, if we just track the side here, the track will slip up and down the side of this monitor here because it won't know exactly where to pin it. It needs to go on, on a high contrast corner. Okay. Also, we need to take a point that is visible for the entire scene. So it's always worth sort of running through the scene just to check that 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 point that we're tracking is visible for the entire scene. So it's always worth checking your scene first to, to find the point that you want to track, okay? Now what we want to do is define the search area. So let's just, uh, I think we need a, a reason. What I want to do is I want to make the search area quite, in fact, sorry, I should explain. 
you've got two sort of rectangles here. This rectangle here is basically the area that's being tracked. So it's trying to match what's in this rectangle every frame in order to track the scene. Then this rectangle here is the search area. So for this purpose, uh, I want to be reasonably, because this goes quite close to the side, the side of the um, uh, uh, screen at one point, you know, it gets pretty close here. I want to make sure that the track Okay, so because this goes quite close to the edge of our frame, I want to make sure that the track area is, is reasonably small that we're trying to track. Okay, we're not trying to track too big an area. But I want to keep the search area reasonably large. Okay, so let's try and do that if we can. That's what I want to do. I want to grab that. It's the search area I want to keep large. So this is our tracking area. And then the search area, I'll keep that reasonably large. Right, so I'm hoping that this setup will track fine. Once we're happy with that setup, okay, so this is the area we're tracking and then this is the search area, okay. Once we're happy with that, what I'm going to do is click this icon here which says track to end. Okay, and you can see it's going to track through our scene now. Let's see how well that does. And it seems to be tracking uh, quite well on the monitor. It's slipping a little bit, but for the purpose of what we're doing, we're, we're happy with that. We don't need to go in and refine this too much. It's just, it's, it's just being used to, to, to basically move a garbage mat around. Okay, we're nearly there. Okay, so that's now tracked. And what you'll see is that this, okay, Can you see it's is 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 the track is basically following the position of our of that corner of the monitor every frame. Great. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want this roto here to follow that track. So what we can do then is now we've tracked it, we can disconnect this tracker. This has effectively got all the data of that track is stored on this node. It's kind of similar to the, uh, the, the the lens distort node where once we've analyzed the distortion all the information on that distortion is stored on the node. Okay. Now what we want to do is basically feed this tracker into this roto but before we do that we need to make sure that the, the, the tracking the roto and the track is lined up. So remember we track the roto on frame, we actually drew the roto on frame one. So before we join it we want to make sure we're on frame one so the starting point of the roto matches uh, uh, the correct position of the tracker, uh, 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 the actual correct sort of starting point of the tracker, okay? Otherwise it won't line up. So go to frame one because that's where we drew the roto, okay? Now what I'm going to do is connect this um, node into uh, our tracker, okay? Uh, and then what I'm going to do is on the tracker icon itself, I need to select this transform node. At the moment, it's not doing any transform at all, okay? So even though the data is in there, it's not actually moving anything as a result of that. So now what we want to do is we want to select, okay, uh, match move, all right? Now what we want to do, so now we've selected match move, if I click on the roto here, you can see the roto, and as I do this, you should see, I was rather hoping that we would see the uh, see it follow the track, hang on a moment. Okay, I've just had a bit of a thick moment here. Um, basically what I want to do is I want to feed the roto into the tracker, and not the other way around, okay? so. Uh, again, before I connect this, let's line it up for frame one. Okay. Then I feed that into there. And then I'm going to feed the tracker into here. Let's click on here. So now when I move this, you can already see the roto is moving here. Okay. 
that's great and all I want to do now is just go to the last frame of my video here so I've, I think I've, I've slightly offset my playhead here okay here we go that's the last frame of my video and because this tracks moving forward uh, this is actually getting larger so all I need to do is I, mean, I could track a couple of points and then actually make this scale up if I wanted to but I feel that's going a little bit far further than we need to do all I want to do is basically grab these roto points and just adjust them okay for this final frame and then that should be everything that we need to track out these points so now every frame yeah it's this roto is covering these two people here then obviously I've got a similar problem with this chap at the back here that's moving okay uh, again I'll just go to I might as well just go to uh, in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the last frame again because this is yeah, I'm going to go to the last frame. And then what I'm going to do is just add, so I've got my Roto node selected here. I'm just going to add another, uh, uh, hang on, I don't need to add a layer. Sorry, I didn't need to add a layer. I just want to add another Roto to that. So all I'm going to do is select this Bezier tool again and then just quickly Roto around this chap here. Okay. So we can add multiple Rotos in the same Roto node, which is useful because now... They're both tracked, so whenever I draw anything on here, it's all tracked. So that's covering that chap. And then what I've got is a guy right at the start of the scene. Okay, let's just I'm just gonna turn remove this tracking node here so I can see this a bit more clearly. Okay. Uh okay. And then what I'm gonna do is um uh, in fact, what I might do is just slightly adjust this node here just to kind of cover this area a bit better. And then what I'm going to do is just add another roto here for this chap. Okay, I'm hoping that that's going to cover him. Great. Okay. So now if I go into my uh, my alpha, you'll see that I've got all those areas um, masked off uh, and I'm now ready to actually perform my 3D track okay